last time I used it. Maybe it'll work this time too. Oh, cool. That's me. Great. Looks like it's working. Got my juice. Hey, Patrick. <laughs> Uh, so this is not going to be a security stream at all. It's going to be much more like the one where I failed to write JavaScript a whole bunch. Uh, so a while ago, uh, like three years ago, I wrote a little HTML canvas VU meter thing. Here it is. A digital VU meter. Um, and it's kind of okay ish it's a little slider and it goes up and down and it's got like shadow blur on it and stuff um but back in september i got an email from someone saying oh, i really like it um can you help me rearrange it so it goes like horizontal instead left to right um and <laughs> yeah that was back in september i'm just now kind of getting around to uh having a go um, don't judge me for that. Uh, and I, I'm not going to look at the code for this version. I'm just going to dive into it and, and try and write another one uh, w without any of that. So well, let's get some of the boring stuff out of the way. Uh, I'll just do this in my hacks repo. I'll call it like VU2 or something like that. That works. So we're going to need a few things. Uh, HTML file. Uh, let's, wow. Already, huh? Type. Kind of ironic that I can't type the word type, but there you go. So let's make a little HTML page. Throw in a head. That's, that is not right. This is going to be VU2. This is the title. Have the body end of the body. Um, we're going to need some script as well. Probably a main.js and probably some script that's just in the page as well. Um, then in the body we're going to need some kind of canvas element. She's probably going to need an ID or something like that. Hey Rittenhouse! Uh, so we need to give it an ID. I tend to call mine stage for some reason. Like there's actors on the stage. Don't know why. It's going to need a width. Uh, let's say 600 and a height. And we're doing like left to right. So probably not very high, like 100 or something like that. Uh, let's get a little PHP server running. Or something just so um, you've got like an actual thing to use. Cool. So I think it's there, but we can't see it because canvas elements are invisible. So let's add some style and just say any canvas element is going to have a border with one pixel solid black or something just so you can see where it is. Okay, cool. So, we've got a canvas element, we've got an HTML page, we're going to want a main.js that's going to have JavaScript in it. Um, and I think we're probably going to need something to actually like drive this uh, view meter to. So, uh, that input type range thing I think w was actually a pretty nice way to do it. Is it range? Um, I have a name. Oh, I'll make it an ID of. Oh, naming things is hard. Uh, volume. Why not? Uh, and I think this has min and max values. Let's go with 100. See what that looks like. Okay, cool. That looks right. Uh, and we need to give it an initial value too. Um, and let's just throw it in a div to make it, or a div to make it block level. Cool. All right, yeah, that'll do for now. Um, 
let's uh, start trying to draw something. So I think I'm going to make a function in my main.js called something like view meter. Uh, and I'm going to have it accept the canvas element as an argument. Um, this might just be me, but like when I have external JavaScript files, I don't like uh, making any assumptions about the page that they're going to be included in. So if I do like a document get element by ID, for example, I don't like that to be in the external JavaScript file because it means that JavaScript file can only be included in pages that have a matching element in it. So I tend to use like a script tag on the page itself for that. Uh, so let's do that. So let's have the stage. It's going to be document .query selector of canvas stage. And what else do we need? We need the range slider. Uh, I call it volume. Is going to be document query selector. And this is an input with ID volume. Okay, cool. Uh, and then I'll just call that view meter function using the stage element. And here, let's just like console.log it or something to make sure it's actually there and working. Mm -mm. Okay, cool. So we've got the canvas element like being logged. Let me just make this a teensy bit bigger because I'm aware that my screen is a silly size. Uh, okay, what next? Uh, and I want a way to like transfer the uh, value onto the element. So I'm actually going to use a data attribute. Uh, I'll call this data volume. Why not? Uh, and set it to zero. And then let's add an event listener to the change property, I think. Uh, let me just, what is going on here? Tab, tab. Apparently this is <laughs> not indented correctly. One, two, cool. Uh, let's just console.log the event so we can see if it's firing. So when we change this, uh, we get an event changed from there. And if we look at this, nothing's changed. Cool. Uh, when that changes, we want to take the value and transfer it to the data attribute. Uh, and then we only need to pass like just that one element onto uh, into the view meter function. I think, yeah, why not? That makes enough sense for me. Uh, so let's do stage.dataset.volume is going to be equal to e.target.value. Uh, and let's console.log the stage immediately after we've set it. Okay, cool. So data volume 49, data volume 94, uh, and that's cool. So that means we can use uh, that data set value in our view meter function. Um, and like all the wiring of how the value changes kind of sits outside of that function. So it could be listening to like a WebSocket or something, or reading some value from an API or, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's just nice to get that sort of decoupling in early. Okay. And delete that console.log. That's probably it for this. Let's have a look at this view meter function. So we've got an element um, and we're going to be using HTML canvas, which if you're not familiar is like a drawing API sort of a thing. Uh, I really like it. Uh, and, and one of the things you need to get to do the actual drawing as a thing called the context, uh, which you call with get context, get with the element, <laughs> get context. And we want a 2D context because we're going to be drawing in 2D. Uh, so let's just make sure this is working by making a rectangle at 10 pixels, 10 pixels, 
and it's 100 pixels wide and 50 pixels high uh, and then we can fill it whoops a daisy oh yeah cool so we've got a rectangle so um, the plan is we need to kind of fill this with some number of boxes uh, i guess uh, let's pull up uh, some reference material a digital view meter image search like something like this but horizontal uh, yeah that's a real one so got three green and, and some red ones something like this um but I, I want this to be quite flexible so i could just like hard code how many uh like bars there's going to be and all that sort of thing uh, but really i should try and make it dynamic um i should try my best anyway so let's have a go so i'm going to need to know some things uh, I'm going to be using a lot the width of the element, so I'm going to make it a nice short uh, variable, not constant actually, uh, and the height too, uh, because really when I'm doing stuff like drawing things, I want to be making my x values relative to the width and my y values relative to the height. So that if you change the size of the canvas, it all works out. So here, this might be uh, width times 0.1 and height times 0.1 to get 10% of the canvas width and height, respectively. Yeah, hopefully that'll work. So we need to decide how many uh, bars we're going to have. Let's call them bars. A bar count, let's make it 15 also yeah uh, and then just let's use a loop uh, so start with i zero i is less than the bar count i plus plus and for each one of those we are gonna uh, draw a rectangle so we will begin a path uh, and our w value is gonna uh, our x value is gonna change our y value um, is that the right way around? Yeah, our x value is going to change and our y value is not. It's going to stay the same. Uh, and our sizes are going to stay the same as well. Um, but um, oh, uh, Rittenhouse says, yeah, I might want to tweet out I'm live with a Twitch link. Um, yeah, I, like if, if people want to come and watch, they can. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be up on YouTube afterwards anyway. So like a lot of the reason that i stream stuff is actually just because it kind of forces me to make videos <laughs> uh and and then you know they end up on youtube and and people can watch them whenever they like so oh. if someone else wants to tweet one that's fine um okay so our rectangle is gonna be at some position um yeah no don't worry about the interruption it's cool uh so the y value is going to remain constant uh the width what do we want the width to be so the width is going to be some fraction of the width over the bar count uh minus a bit <laughs> which is going to be the gap between so let's make a bar gap variable and for now let's say the gap's going to be one percent of the width of the screen yeah okay cool so we'll take the width over the bar count and we need to subtract the width times the bar gap all right yeah um uh, the width over the bar count times the bar gap minus one something like that let's just <laughs> let's just make them all like this for now uh 
and the height is going to be the height of the whole canvas minus two times not point one times the height or something like that uh, let's see what we get okay so that looks like roughly the right size top to bottom quick maths two plus two is four uh, and you know the rest and then our width value needs some tweaking let's make that 0.1 percent there or something like that that looks kind of okay um, we'll set the fill style to be green or something for now uh, and then we want to go through and draw more of these so the offset is this is not point nor one and we want to add to that i times the bar width which is width uh, let's just see what that does okay that goes all the way to the end uh, and we want plus the bar gap uh, which is the width times the bar gap you know what? we can do that properly up here uh, okay plus the bar gap does not work uh, probably because I'm an idiot uh, so we have let's ditch the one percent for now uh, I start start at zero plus the times the width so we'll start off at zero plus the bar gap okay cool and because it's kind of hard to see uh, what's going on instead of filling we're going to do a stroke um, which apparently breaks everything uh, let's set a stroke style to be black okay no errors but nothing else that probably means we've screwed something up a lot oh, plus the width yeah that's not right there we go okay so we've got all the bars <laughs> not watching the stream uh, you have nothing to worry about my JavaScript skills are seriously lacking uh, which is kind of one of the reasons I'm doing this to be honest like it helps me uh, stay sharp uh, so we need to tune the width a bit so we need to subtract one bar gap I think maybe okay Bum, 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 bum. Oh, we need to add in. This was the bar gap here. Plus the i times the width. So that should stay the same, which it does. Um, and we need to do that times by. Yeah, okay times by i but we want at least one Ugh. so that would be times i plus one i need to work on my math skills <laughs> okay cool uh, and then we end up with that one at the end because this needs to be no no, that's silly. Uh, off by one error is our cruel, cruel mistress. Who thought drawing rectangles would be so hard? <laughs> okay. So our width is the width of the whole canvas over the bar count remove the gap value once 
Oh, okay. So we actually need to subtract something a little bit extra because I've got this plus one here. That shifts it to the beginning. That shifts it to the end. And our overall width is too wide. You know what? We can just fix that later. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's just deal with that later. Oh, my phone's going off. I'm popular. Hooray. Okay, cool. So we need to like take the value and decide like what color each one of these bars should be. Um, and to help us with that, let's just set the data to like 50, halfway across or something like that. So in here, we're gonna set a fill style to something. And uh, it's probably gonna be a function get fill style for box or something like that. Get box color. Um, and we need to know which box we're dealing with right now. So I guess we'll pass in the I, probably. Well, let's make a function for that. So get box color is going to take the box number uh, and it wants to give us back something. Uh, so I'm going to want some colors. Um, let's just go with green, yellow, and red. Uh, and depending on what the value is, like I want to huh, uh, get a different color depending on what box we're in. But we probably don't want them to be like evenly distributed. So I'm going to say if I is, oh, hey, let's default to green. Yeah. So let's see, equal to zero. Uh, and then we'll say if I is greater than, uh, let's say the bar count times, uh, how far up do we wanna go? Three quarters, I guess. 0.75. Mm. If it's greater than 0.6 of the bar count, then we'll say C is going to be 1. And if it's greater than the bar count times 0 0.9, we can tweak these later. Um, we'll set C to 2, and then we'll return colors too. Something like that. Let's see what that does. Absolutely nothing. Okay. So we set this fill style, we get a box color using I, and then we're calling stroke, right? That's obviously going to be an issue. Let's fill that instead. Okay, cool. We can just tweak those values a little bit. I think I kind of want to take this up to like 6.5 or something. And this one down to 0.8. Yeah. Okay. That'll do. Um, I guess actually we want to know not only uh, what color this should be, like depending on its position, but we need to know based on the value too. Mm. 
some volume. Hmm. This will be a lamb data set dot volume. So at the moment we're filling all of them. Uh, and what we want to do is like change the color a little bit if it's switched on, I guess. So what we probably want to do is use something like the HSL color model. So if you're not familiar with uh, HSL colors, um, yeah, HSL color picker. So instead of having a red, a green, and a, and a blue value, we have a hue, a saturation, and a lightness. Um, and that's really nice because we can like pick a hue or like a color, I guess you would call it. So like we might pick this for our green ones. You can pick a saturation level. Uh, and then you can tweak like just the lightness. So this might be like our switched off color uh, down here. And note that this is like set to 13%. Uh, and this is the, uh, like this might be our switched on value, like 45% or something like that. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, and we probably want them all to be the same saturation uh, and the hue will change and the lightness will change as well. Yeah, okay. So actually our hues are going to be something like, let's start with uh, 99 for our green, uh, 48 I guess, for our yellow, and zero for the red, oh, like a nice strong red. Ah, okay, that works. Uh, so we can leave, what are you doing? Um, let's swap these out for H's just so I don't get confused. So this is setting the hue. And then whether it's on or not, is going to decide the um, what's it going to decide? It's going to decide the lightness. Uh, hey, Almithra, uh, today's project is making an HTML canvas digital VU meter, uh, which is eh, maybe a slightly odd choice of project, but there you go. Okay, cool. So we've got some hues uh, and, and we have these values where we're going to decide, um, like if the bar we're looking at is uh, over, like further along the thing, we're going to change its hue. Uh, and then we need to decide like if the volume, which is range zero to 100, um, means that the current bar should be switched on or not. So for now, let's just uh, return. Oh, we can do it this way. Hues zero. You know what? <laughs> this is really dumb. Let's just hard code it. Uh, hue 48 uh, and zero. Like there is zero point in, in having that array there. Um, so can, we can return a string with HSL and in there will be our hue, our saturation, which is a percentage. Let's go with like 80% uh, and a lightness, which is, uh, I don't know. Let's just pick 50% for now. So we'll return that instead. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we've got slightly different colors. Um, and now we want to change the lightness depending on whether it's turned on or not. So our lightness can default to, did we say like 13% looked good? Yeah, why not? Uh, and if, oh, what's this going to be? So we want to know, like, is the n number of the bar... Oh, huh. um, 
let's do a nice example so an example volume would be like 50 or 30 let's say um, and then I might be looking at bar 4 of 15 oh okay and because it's 0 to 100 that should be fine so I can just divide 15 by 4 or 4 by, <laughs> 4 by 15 uh, divide 4 by 15 and times it by 100 and just compare them yeah so if I over the bar count times 100 is less than the volume then our lightness becomes like 50 or something uh, we throw the lightness in there and it breaks assignment to constant very oh, 28 this should be a variable okay like that kind of works a little bit so we set to 50 it's about halfway along that makes sense uh, but what we really want to do is, is throw this into some kind of frame loop because at the moment like it's just happening on load uh, and it's only drawing once so now that we've got that little function let's make this into our draw function uh, it's going to take a time oh, would we want it to be named we do actually want this to be a named function for a reason that'll become clear in a minute so we're going to have a draw function it accepts the current time which we may or may not use and then it's going to recurse using set animation frame not set request animation frame uh, using draw uh, I am not using view I am using just just JavaScript um, uh, and then we want to call request animation from that as well okay cool so <laughs> we can it's kind of working so if it's down here we got one zero up here it gets max that's not bad it's okay like uh, we need to fix some of the stuff about the way this looks though right? so we need to set the body background to be something darker so it doesn't look quite so shit um i don't really like full black um let's go with that one okay um And also, I have <laughs> realized the mistake that I have made here. Uh, can you spot it? Uh, this should be hue saturation lightness. That's better. There we go. Okay. And you know what? I can ditch that border now, and then I don't have to worry about the fact that it doesn't quite line up properly. Cool. Let's just set our initial value back to zero. And then it looks kind of right the way it loads. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things I kind of don't like about this is that uh, firstly, uh, it doesn't look like lights. So I think we want to add a bit of shadow blur. Uh, canvas shadow blur. Oh, shadow blur equals level is apparently how you do it. Um, let's see what that looks like. Uh, so we can just set things up here. 
Shadow Blur equals, I don't know, four. Okay, I can't see anything there, so let's make it 15 instead. That does not do anything. Why not? Shadow color. Okay. Uh, so. We also need to set the shadow color to be the same as that. Can we do it that way? Wow. Yeah. That is not quite what I had in mind. Shadow blur is one. Okay. Oh, and you know what we need to do as well, actually, is to uh, clear and redraw the canvas every time. Clear a rectangle from zero, zero to width height every frame. Because otherwise we're gonna get these like weird artifacts. Okay. Let's up our shadow blur again to like five. I'll just make the dim ones blurry as well. But that's not too bad. Like they look kind of like they're glowing. <laughs> yeah. Let's up the saturation a little bit. It's more like it. Oh. I do still need to fix that width thing uh, because it just like gets this real sharp ending, uh, which I do not like. So uh, let's figure out uh, where I screwed up there. Let's just separate these things out a little bit. So here's how you set the shadow color and the fill style. Um, and then we set the width I times the width. Oh, do we just need this to be the width minus a single bar gap? Nope. Uh, oh, plus the width. Hey, Ed. How you doing? Mm, let me think about this. Uh, you know what? This should be times the width minus one. Or plus one. Maybe. When in doubt, like if you don't know, not the width plus one. No, you fool. That makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, my power line theme is, uh, this is actually Vim Airline. Um, and I think it's the default. Uh, although I do, do include Vim Airline themes. There's my airline config. Oh no, here you go. Uh, power line-ish is my airline theme. Okay, let's fix this. Uh, so if there's 15 bars, then there's 14 gaps between them, plus one on each end. So when we're dealing with the bar count down here, it's actually the width over the bar count Plus one. Minus one. <laughs> let's just try both. Oh, let's put brackets in because I never trust my own maths. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. 
That looks right now. Okay, cool. So like it looks kind of like it's glowing and it sort of works. Um, but like it looks really artificial right now. Like if I change this uh, and like it jumps straight to it. And I kind of want it to have like a little bit of an analog feeling uh, thing where it you know, takes a second to get there. So I think we, we want to fix that. Uh, and the other thing I want is like, I don't want to, I, I want to see it move every time, like without lifting up my mouse on this range slider. So let's go for HTML input range events or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm going to add some delay. Uh, ooh, on input is maybe the thing that I want. So around line 24, let's change that to our input. Oh yeah, that's much nicer. Yeah. Dink. Yeah, so uh, at the moment, like if I move my mouse quickly, it just snaps really quickly. So I think what I'll do um, is take the volume and have like a target volume which is going to be like what it's actually set to and then I'll have an actual volume and I'll just like approach it by some fraction of the remaining distance probably uh, so let's have a target volume which is going to be lm.dataset.volume. I could just use that directory, but it's directly, but it's nice to have names for things. Uh, and I'll have a current volume as well, which is going to be something. Like it's going to start off as zero. Yeah, cool. And instead of the data set volume, I'm going to pass in the current volume. And for now, just like on every frame, I'm going to set the current volume to the target volume because like, I just want to make sure I haven't broken anything. Like, and I have, so that makes sense. Uh, what keyboard do I use? Uh, <laughs> this is a real cheap, shitty Dell uh like rubber dome thing because just because that's what's plugged in um because i keep for meaning to plug in my other keyboard which is this one which is a philco magistouch tankyless with cherry mx browns and a sheep sticker which is you know the most important part of any keyboard okay so i broke something um so current volume is the target volume. Oh, no, that makes no sense. This still needs to be lm.dataset.volume. Cool. So that should be, yeah. So that doesn't break anything. So that's our target volume. And we want to do something like move halfway towards our goal each frame maybe or maybe it wants to be less than that uh i have not watched silicon valley it's on my very very long list of things to watch but it's, it's really long um okay so our current volume and, and like which way we want to do this kind of depends on whether it's above or below so we want to say if the current volume is less than dot data set dot volume. And, you know, I'm going to still have that target volume variable, but I'm just going to have it in here just so that things read a little bit more like sentences for me. Uh, okay. 
So if the current volume is less than the target volume, then we want to say add some fraction of it. So that will be the target volume minus the current volume. That's the difference between them. Uh, and then we're going to times that by, let's move like a fifth of the way towards it. Um, otherwise it's going to be the other way around. Um, we're going to subtract the current volume minus the target volume plus two or something like that. And that's per frame will move like a fifth of the way. So, ah, cool, that works. So now there's like a little bit of delay. Between, like, let's lower that to like 10% instead because it's per frame. So now it's like kind of limits the maximum velocity of this thing. It can't keep up. And we can change that value to make it a little quicker. There we go. If I could beatbox, I would beatbox. Untis, untis, untis. Or something like that. So, I guess the nice thing, uh, in theory, if we've done all of this right, uh, is that I can go in here and like change the size of the canvas uh, and have the scale automatically. Uh, or I can change, for example, the number of bars and have more of them in a shorter space. I like that makes it nice and configurable. I feel like there should be a little bit more yellow or something on there. Let's have another look at it. Uh, reference material so what do these tend to do so this one's got loads of yellow and a little bit of red this one's just green and red this one has one two yellow and and two red so that's actually really similar to what we've got so far so maybe three and three is not not a not a bad idea Do, 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 do. So I guess probably really, really nice would be to have a bunch of these and have something drive them. Uh, but I don't know what. Hmm. Or maybe just having like one thing instead. You want something that changes like relatively often. Um, yeah, current mic volume. Yeah, okay. Let's have a look. Uh, JavaScript audio microphone volume. Ooh, did we go for Stack Overflow? Yeah, why not? Okay, let's see. Here's the snippet you need to detect. Audio controls are available. Okay, user media. Check if a mic is connected to the volume of the sound coming through the mic in the duration of the game. How would I do this? You go to Stack Overflow. Uh, a repository that demonstrates the input volume you desire. Simple volume meter. <laughs> I, w I wonder, is this going to be like just the same thing that I've been writing? Hello? Oh, wow, okay. Clip indicating word audio. Using a script processor. It is necessary to use a script processor in order to not miss any clipping samples 
Otherwise, you could implement this using a real-time analyzer. This sounds hard. <laughs> uh, like if I knew about like audio engineering and stuff. Um, this is like nearly as much code as I wrote already. So I have a create audio meter function. Let me just increase the text size for you all. Um, an audio context create script processor using 512. I could read the comments and it might explain things. How smooth I would like it to be. Volume audio process. This dot volume is a math that marks RMS. This volume over the averaging. Okay. And here's the like main web app logic. So they make a new audio context, attempt to get the audio input, asking for an audio input, and they got the stream. This is what happens when they, they do an alert when they can't get a stream. Um, if they got a stream, they create uh, audio context media stream source, create an audio meter, and then they kick off the draw loop where they do a clear rectangle with the height, fill style is red or green. And then they do meter.volume width. So this is the thing I want. So let's work backwards from there. Is meter a global variable here? Yeah. Okay. They've made this quite kind of hard to follow in a way. Um, so we could read all of this um, and, and understand it uh, and all that sort of thing. And, and I think you can probably see where this is going. Or we could copy and paste it and just hack it instead. Oh, it's a tough call. Let's just quickly see if anyone else has like a much simpler way to do it. P5.js, mic input examples. Yeah, sure. Do, 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 do. Oh, cool, you make a ball bounce. Let mic, P5, audio in, mic start, draw, background, mic, get level. Oh, now this looks way easier. I am not familiar with P5JS, but I guess I can be, I can about to be P5.min.js. Let's go with the uncompressed version. Um, that downloaded. So let's move that out of my downloads into current directory. And let's, was it literally just called p5? Yeah, p5.js. Let's load that before our main.js. Go back to the example. So in the setup function, they create a canvas. They make a mic and they call mic.start. Okay. We can do that. A new P5 audio in. Mic.start. And then in their draw, saying a mic dot get level. Okay. So how about instead of the volume slider, 
we pass a mic object in as well as that element. So this is our microphone. And you know what, for now, let's just console.log the mic. Dot, what was it? Get level on every frame. And then see how we do. Uh, p 5audioin in is not a constructor. <gasps> did they lie to me or did I misread it? I knew... Mm. New p 5audioin in. Looks the same. Hmm. Let's play a game of who is wrong. The documentation or me. Let's find another example for comparison. Uh, we are trying to make the VU meter thing that, that I wrote um, respond to the mic. So there's this new P5 dot audio in thing here too. Photo audio in. What the hell is that? That makes no sense. Well, you know what we do in situations like this is we Google for them. Uh, in order to use live video audio. <laughs> You have to use HTTPS. Ah, uh, huh. super. I am using localhost. Unfortunately, this gets used really nice. Okay. Um. Hmm. Be nice if it gives a better error than that. And I can't just use HTTPS on that with this PHP web server thing. Uh, but what could we do? Unless it supports it. PHP web server HTTPS. Hello. Mm. This is a server configuration issue. Yeah. Okay, so it's like not supported by default. I don't think. Uh, okay. Oh, man, that is a ridiculous error to have. Let me just close some of these tabs down. Just have a, another quick check of a different result. Just to make sure get you user media no longer works on insecure origins. Okie dokie. Yeah, so I was thinking about using NGROC. Um, the other thing we could do, because it's probably going to be the quickest, is we could just switch to Repl.it. Because that will give us a little uh, HTTPS um, server with everything on it. Uh, and like it's kind of nice actually it is replit to be honest I quite like it uh, so 
let's cap the current file clipboard it we'll change this to script.js we'll upload p5.js as well that should work Come on. Okay. Um, let's just grab a main.js as well. I should probably set up one of those like PB copy type things, but you know, what are you going to do? Upload file. Uh, downloads P5. Oh, that's why I can't find it. Uh, because I put it somewhere else. Ring home, source, github, tom, nom, nom, hacks, view two. Cool. P5.js. Run. Pull this open. Anything. And we have the same error which makes me think that we have been lied to. <laughs> All these results are pretty old as well. Which makes me suspicious. But like the library works on this one. To run this example local, you need P5 sign library and the running local server. Hmm. Well. Where do they include it? Do they? not include their own library <laughs> in the page. That seems kind of silly. JavaScript files, jQuery, ace, mode, prism, init, examples, p5.min, p5.dom, p5.sound.min.js. This sounds like something that I could be missing. Maybe. Yeah, so I, I looked at a vanilla JS way um, and they were messing around with uh, audio processes and all kinds of things and this looked easy. <laughs> Apparently not. Um, so I thought, you know, that'll work, but maybe not. Uh, I thought it was going to be easier than this. Um, it, it is the genuine answer to that. So that example page fetches min and p5sound.js as well. You know what we could just do is a real let's fetch this. Make sure it looks okay. I think we might just need that file. <laughs> uh, we will upload it to Replit, which is here.
and that might fix it. You never know. That sound I should probably you know like debug it properly or something, but what are you gonna do? Ah, uh, oh, okay, this, this looks slightly better. Oh, I wants to use my microphone. Hello. Oh, we put it in the console, didn't we? So we've got a low value float, uh, and I apologize in advance for this, but ah, okay, cool. So it looks like it's a, between zero and one. Uh, we can work with that. Let's go script.js. And it's not gonna work in this iframe ever. So Mike, get level, instead of LM data set volume, uh, we can pick Mike dot get level times one hundred. <laughs> I did warn you. I'll run that. Open it in a new tab. Hello. Ooh. Like it's moving a little bit. I kind of. I think it needs to be times by more. By ten. Maybe. Let's see. How about that? Oh, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, like I think it was between like <laughs> You're listening to the dulcet tones of Tom Nom Nom. Uh yeah, it it looked like it went up to about point two, but I think that was just because um I didn't want to like max it out really, really high. Um, so we can compare it with the um, OBS thing, which is saying I'm getting to about there. So I, I actually, I think that kind of calibrates about right. Um, but now that we have a real input, I think it actually looks a little bit sluggish. So how about, we speed this up and make it go a bit faster. How about now? Oh, that's not too bad. Hey. Cool. So I didn't know I was going to make this work with my actual voice when um, when I did it. Uh, uh, but, you know, the nice thing about it being on Repolit too is that uh, you can all just go and have a look because it's like public by default. Uh, so let's have a look at some of the code that we wrote. It's pretty, it's not, it's not great. <laughs> um, but like, there's not a great deal to it really. I think the main trickiness was <laughs> getting nice, getting the, um, <laughs> getting the boxes the right size in the first place because I'm terrible at maths. Um, but also, yeah, like getting that audio thing working. Because you watch, if I go back to this like mic threshold example, oh yeah, <laughs> hey, look at that. <laughs> to run this example locally, you need the p5.sound library. Ah. Oh. Yeah, should have should have read that right there. Like I guess I just yeah. No, I I got nothing. <laughs> I you know when in doubt read the fucking manual. That probably would have been a good thing to do. Cool. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave that there. Uh, I've been streaming for an hour or so, and um, you know I don't want to take up any more of people's time. Um, yeah, cool. Any questions? Hmm. Up time, one hour, 10 minutes. Yeah, like I said, that was, that's what I was going to do. And uh, I did it. Um, uh, maybe I'll actually do some security stuff on a stream next time. Like that'd be fun. Uh, I've had a couple of requests to do um, some DOM XSS stuff, um, 
but that requires like a little bit of preparation whereas this did not which is why this one won um you're welcome for the content uh did i get the job i'm looking for i am still uh messing around with jobs i haven't accepted a new position yet um all kinds of back and forth have been going on um i have had a lot of people approach me which is actually super amazing to be honest i'm really humbled um and and feel really bad that i've not been able to reply uh to everyone and or, or at least um not yeah I got like I think maybe 40 50 messages or something like that um and I I can't really uh give everyone the, the response that they deserve um so I'm, I'm trying to prioritize things uh that sound super interesting to me um and I, I've been talking to a few people about a few different things so uh, I should find something worst comes to worst I should uh or probably just go and do book bounty full-time for a little bit or something like that um but really I, th I think it'd be better for me to have a regular full-time job i'll be at working from home um do i plan to do any webgl to make graphs um i've never done any webgl before so i think i probably have a little bit of learning before i uh, try and do that on a, on a stream i don't really know what i'm getting myself in for there um oh thank you um i i'm i'm glad people like my tools uh like it's it's really nice every now and again i get a, a message from someone saying that they got a bounty using my tools or that you know it's changed the way that they work um so yeah that's really nice so yeah I, i'm gonna sign off um hope you all <laughs> enjoyed it slash maybe learned something who knows and uh yeah thanks for watching everyone Ooh, frequency uh like yeah I'm, I'm not going into that rabbit hole right now <laughs> so yeah have a good night or morning or day or whatever time it is where you are